All right. I'm glad you're so confident, because now we're going to talk about assignment one. Yay! Try not to be so enthusiastic. I think it was my summer class. They actually did start, start saying yay. They were so, so, uh... okay, they were so weird. I will never admit to saying that about them, of course. You just recorded it. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell them to delete that part. <laughs> All right, so let's go to our assignments. Assignment one, you'll see there are two files, assignment one instructions and the assignment one submission form. Let me open them both up really quick. Please use the submission form. It makes it much easier for me to grade. Make sure you fill out all of the lines. You must have at least 20. And I do count them, by the way, because I have had groups that in the past have deleted a line thinking I won't notice. I count. Actually, I'll get my daughter to do it. She can count to 20 now. Didn't I tell you I have to talk about my kids as much as I can throughout the semester? All right, so let me close this. All right, can you see that okay? You want me to make it bigger? A little bit bigger? Is that okay or bigger? Yes? Okay. You are going to, as a group, perform an informal web application usability review using all of the knowledge that you have learned thus far in class. All right. This is a team assignment. So you're going to be forming your teams. Form a team of, oh, I forgot to change the number again. Five people, preferably. Four people was for my smaller classes. Form a team of approximately five people. It can be four people if you want. It can be six people. I really prefer five people. Each team member will take a role. Now, you can either take individual roles that I'm going to talk about, or you can share the roles. This is just to give you an idea of the things you need to do. One, there is a scribe. This is basically the person who, as you are working as a team, is recording what you are saying and finding and talking about in this form. You only need one person to write it down per session. Make sense? There's a demonstrator. You are going to be using either a laptop or a computer, or you can use a tablet when you are looking at this site. You only need one person to be manning the mouse. You know how you only have one driver in a car? You only need one person manning the mouse or putting their finger all over the, uh, the iPad. Or sorry, tablet. Do not do what my five-year-old does or I'm trying to work on my tablet and all of a sudden there are 10 fingers on there trying to do 10 other things. Not going to work very well. So you really only need one person to do that as you are working as a team. And then there are facilitators. They locate the appropriate reference material to be used for the review. Here is my very subtle hint. I decided to make it easy for you and put a summary of it here. In other words, what does that mean? Those are the people who are really going to be focused on looking at the site, looking at how the site works, and helping analyze it in terms of your usability goals and your design principles. Now, this is not to say that the person who is manning the mouse or the tablet or the person who's writing it down does not need to input any thought or help into finding these issues. What it means is that they are going to be focused on either writing things down, typing things up, or manning things. So that's going to be their primary focus. I do expect them to contribute. The primary focus of the other team members is to discuss and talk about and find those things that meet our usability goals and design principles and those that violate it. So what exactly do you have to do? You're going to perform an informal review of papajohns.com. 
I will not buy you pizza. I'm very sorry. If you order pizza, I will not reimburse you. I won't pay for it. But if you get really hungry and your group wants to buy a pizza, feel free. All right. Now when you get to papajohns.com, you'll see why. It's such a fabulous site for this. All right, I want you to focus on the process of placing an order. <laughs> Don't let your, your, your one, one classmate bias you. Come with an open mind. Because you have to find both positive and negative aspects. All right, I want you to complete as much of the chart. It used to be the second page. I have it on a separate file. You want to indicate which goals and principles are met and violated and how they are met and violated. You must be specific. You also must be specific enough that I know what page you're on and I know what component you're talking about. So don't just write something like the go button. Yeah, if there's a go button on every page, is that going to be very helpful? Unless you're talking about the same behavior over every page. You want to be specific. Type your comments into a chart. It will expand. And for those issues that are violated, you also need to make recommendations or suggestions on how to improve it. I do have a sample entry I'll show you in a minute. Only one person in the group needs to upload the document. But make sure the names of everyone in the group is on the document. And please make sure that you get the names correctly. Every semester I have at least one group where the members of the group are, okay, I know this person's name, so they write them down and then the person who's going to turn it in realizes, oh, I don't know Bubba's real name. I'll put Bubba. Now, do you think there's anyone on my roster ever on the planet that has the first name Bubba? <coughs> no, that's a nickname. So please make sure you are not so embarrassed that you do not ask your teammates. Please write down your names so you know who they are. Now, one of the things I want to make sure you also do, that I really, really want to make sure you are thinking critically. I want at least half of these to be violations and, and then the other half met. The ones that are met are a little bit easier. Why? Because there have been groups in the past where they have given me 19 that have been met and one that was violated. How thrilled was I when I received that? Not so much. I really want you to take a critical eye and learn how to start analyzing these things. It's really going to help you, not just in this class, but when you go out into the workforce. So let's look at a quick example. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, you have user action or screen element, the usability goal or design principle, is it met or violated? How is it met or violated? And if it's violated, what are some suggestions? So here's an example. The delete button in the order summary page. What are we talking about? We're talking about affordances. And it is violated. How is it met or violated? It's a green X. X usually denotes go or success, not stop. So affordance is violated. How would you fix it? Change the color to red. Make sure you have each of those elements. 